Yeah, number 12. Okay. It says D2Y over DX2 or squared. This means you got to take the double derivative. We got to take the derivative twice of this guy right here. So first, let's take the derivative of just e to the x squared. Now here we have here a function inside of a function. Let's do the outside function as f, which is e to the x in this case. The inside function is going to be the x squared. So we have an x squared inside of the e. So if we take the derivative of this guy, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. And when I say x, I mean anything inside of it stays inside of it. So we just have the e to the x squared. Then we have to multiply this dude by the derivative of what's inside, which is x squared, so we get 2x. When we write this out, we'd probably put the 2x in front, and then we'd have e to the x squared. That way we don't have to write any parentheses. Boom, that one is done. Now I need to take the derivative for a second time. So now I have to take another derivative, which would be the, um, the second derivative. All right, so here we have a 2x, and we have an e to the x squared. That's 2 functions multiplying to each other. So that means we have to use the product rule. So first, let's take the derivative of the first guy, which is just going to be 2. Now that's multiplying times e to the x squared plus. Then we take the derivative of the second one times the first one. So we got to put the first one first and then we got to take the derivative of this again we did that earlier so don't forget we got to do the chain rule so we have e to the x squared and we're going to multiply that times uh, the derivative of x squared which is just 2x so now i'm going to multiply these two guys together it's probably what would happen we have e to the x squared plus 4x squared times e to the x squared now, I'm not sure about our answers. I'm guessing we probably don't have exactly this up there. Sometimes they like to factor a uh, common factor out of each of those. And I'm looking, it looks like they took out an e to the x squared out. So let's write what we would get if we took an e to the x squared out. If I take e to the x squared out, we would get a 2 uh, for the first term. And for the second term, we have uh, 4x squared, which matches up with letter choice E. All right, let's look at this next one. This next one uh, defines f for us as a, a number times, well, a, a, an x times a, the inverse sine of x. And all we have to do is find uh, the derivative of it. So because we have two functions multiplying to each other, we have the x and the inverse sine x, we have to do the product rule, rule yet again. So if I take the derivative of the first one, that's the x, we get 1. So it's 1 times uh, sine inverse of x plus now we have x times the, the derivative of sine inverse. So I hope you remember that formula. If I took the derivative of the inverse of sine, it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Wow. All right, now let's see which of the answer choices matches up with what we got. I'll check that out. They have a trick right here. They're trying to see if you'll just take one away from the, the inverse sign. Now, that's not a power. That's an inverse sign. So it's definitely not that one. Um, it's not this one because it's supposed to be uh, inverse sign plus that. Oh, check it out. We could put this x on top, though, and I think that'll match one of the ones that we got. Let's see, we got uh, this one right here. All right, let's look at the next one. Woo, doggy! An x and an x and the exponent. All right, I'm sure there's some kind of formula out there, but uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm just gonna write the whole thing out, and I'm gonna use uh, logarithms to help me out because logs get exponents, um, variables out of the exponent. So if I take the natural log of both sides, I can take this x and drop him, and that's what I want. So. We're allowed to do this because algebra rules say whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other side of an equation. And so I took the natural log of both sides, and so what I did was legal. Now I'm going to derive this. Now I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x, so I get a dy over dx. So if I take the derivative with respect to x, um, we're going to have to do the chain rule with this guy using implicit differentiation. The derivative of a natural log is just going to be one, whatever's in, one over whatever is inside the natural log. 
but then I have to multiply this by the derivative of the inside, which is y prime or dy over dx. I'm going to use y prime for this one. And the other side, we have two functions multiplying to each other, so that means product rule time. The derivative of the first one is going to be 1 times the natural log of x. Now, you don't have to write the 1, but I write it just, you know, because I'm teaching you. And then I have to take the derivative of the second one. So first we write the x, and then I take the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x. <clears throat> now, on this side, we have y prime over y, because when we multiply a non-fraction to a fraction, we put it over 1. And on the other side, we have a natural log of x uh, plus 1. That's because when I multiply these two guys, I would get x over x, which equals 1. I didn't get y prime alone just yet. y prime is dy over dx. What I have to do now is multiply both sides by y. That way, this y goes away. I'm left with y prime all by himself, and then I have to multiply this side by y. Now we know what y is. y is given to us in the very beginning. y is x to the x power. So instead of writing y, I'm going to write x to the x power and distribute it to see what we get. Or, wait a second, uh, I see it right here. x to the x power times 1 plus natural log of x. That's our answer, letter C. Alright, here we got some more implicit differentiation. We have our big old equation right here, and we have to find dy dx. So that means we're going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to x. So we have y minus x squared, y squared. We're going to have to do a product rule right here. And then we have a 6. So the derivative of this with respect to x. All right, the first guy is just a y. He's just normal. The derivative of him is 1. And then we have to write, write y prime, which is dy over dx. Next, now remember, we're subtracting. So whatever we do, we got to make sure we put in brackets so we distribute the, x, or the, the negative properly. We have two functions multiplying to each other. So we take the derivative of the first one, which is just 2x, and then we have the y squared. I don't have to do any x prime or anything like that since we are taking the derivative with respect to x. But the next one, that was the first one, the next one that we have to take the derivative of, that one is a y. So we're going to have to multiply it by y prime after we take the derivative. So we get 2xy, y to the 1 power, but we don't need to write the 1. And then we have to multiply this by dy over dx. All right, that 2 right there is from that 2 up there uh, on, the two, on, the, on the y. So we dropped the 2 and then we took 1 away. So now let's simplify and combine like terms. Uh, oh, snap. We almost got to take the derivative of 6. The derivative of 6 is a constant, so we get 0. So let's simplify. We get dy over dx. We have minus 2xy squared plus 2x squared y dy over dx. Now we're trying to get dy over dx alone, um, but it looks like, let's see here. We have one, two, three terms, and this term and this term both have a dy over dx. And I need to get that dy dx out of those terms. So I'm going to take this term and put him on the other side of my equation so I can factor out a dy over dx. So we got dy over dx plus, oh snap, look, I didn't distribute this negative to both of them. Ooh, I'm glad I just caught that. Hey, you probably caught it too, huh? All right, then we have um, minus 2x squared y dy dx equals, and on the other side, we have our 2xy squared. So right here, I'm going to take out my dy dx. So if I take out a dy dx, what do we get? dy dx, we get a 1, and then we have our minus 2x squared y equals 2xy squared. So to get the dy dx alone, we got to divide both sides by that. So now we have 1 minus 2xy uh, squared y. And there you have it. There's our dy over dx. Now let's see if our, our answer selections match what we found. Let's see. That one's going to be this one. All right. I like double checking. I like looking at all the, all the answers to make sure that none of them look like mine. Because sometimes these answers are very subtly different and it'll trick you. All right, this one, more implicit differentiation. Let's, um, but this time we have to derive twice. So I'm going to take the derivative of x squared plus y squared. Luckily, we have no product rule this time. 
Uh, th that's getting kind of annoying. First, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x just once. So we drop the 2 on that x, and we drop the 2 on the y, but then we have a dy dx equals 0. Now, before I take the derivative again, I'm going to want to get that dy dx alone. So let's move that 2x to the other side. So now we have negative 2x. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2y. So I get dy over dx, and I'm going to divide the negative 2x by 2y. And that simplifies. And so we can rewrite this as dy over dx equals negative x over y. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this yet again. So um, actually, I should write it over here, but I can't. So, so d, d over dx. So if I do that, that's going to give me the d squared. So that's a second der derivative over dx squared. So this is going to be our second derivative. Um, so that's uh, the left side. And then we have to take the derivative of that. Now, because our functions are dividing, that means we're going to be using the quotient rule. I'm going to make that x the negative. So first we take the derivative of the x. That's just going to be 1, actually a negative 1. Then we multiply it times the bottom. Next, we're going to subtract. And then we have to take the derivative of the bottom times the top. So I just have a negative x on top. And on the bottom, I get a 1. The derivative of y is 1. Then we have our dy dx. On the bottom, I have to square the denominator. All right, let's simplify this a little bit. Oh man, we have a negative at y, then we have a positive x dy over dx divided by y squared. Oh man, and this is the tricky part right here. Uh, if we want to know what this equals, we can't have this dy dx inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the dy dx, which was, uh, what was that? That was negative x over y, and we're going to plug that in the dy dx. So to continue on with this, this is our, our like third step. So I'm going to change my color again. We have negative y plus x times negative x over y. And we'll simplify and see what we get here. Okay, we have a negative y, and we have a minus x squared over y. And then a y squared on the bottom. Okay, uh, it looks like none of my answers match what I have. It's probably because I have a fraction inside of a fraction. Uh, so let's take the top and the bottom and multiply both the top and the bottom by y. Now that's a 1, so we're not changing this number by multiplying by 1. So if I do that, I would get a negative y squared minus x squared divided by y to the third. And normally in my numerators, if both of them are negative, um, answers like to take out that negative and put it out in front. So we have a y squared plus x squared divided by y to the third. And I think one of those is that, yep, letter B. Letter B is our answer choice for that one.